you'll often hear the phrase, oh, the person wasn't on the radar. I have found that not to be the case. I have found it's more often the case that we're not looking at the right radar screen. The individuals who engage in these mass casualty attacks very often exhibit behaviors either online or with family members or schoolmates or others in the community that cause concern. An 18-year-old gunman killed at least 19 children and two teachers at an elementary school in Uvalde, Texas on Tuesday, May 24th. It's the latest in a series of mass shootings across the country that have left Americans wondering how to prevent the next one, and if it's even possible. The angry and polarized nature of our political discourse in the country makes solving this issue difficult because the people who need to make decisions at a national level on policy can't even come together and agree with what the problem is. Quite frankly, as a law enforcement professional, I ask how many people have to die before we decide as a nation that we are going to take the steps we need to take to address this problem. Orlando Pulse nightclub shooting, the shooting in the Indianapolis FedEx facility, the shooting in Buffalo, and what we're beginning to see in the case of Texas is that these are all examples where individuals came to the attention of law enforcement only to go on and commit a shooting after being evaluated by law enforcement. That tells me that we have to change the way law enforcement evaluates the risk posed by individuals who come to their attention. In many cases, authorities struggle on when to act on social media posts or other online content. We have to do a better job understanding the role the internet plays in not only inspiring these attacks, but also in providing us prior notice that an attack may be coming. In almost every attack that has occurred over the last several years, the attack was informed by content consumed on the internet, and the attacker articulated his intent to commit the attack on the internet as well. Experts say that collaboration between mental health workers, law enforcement, and local communities is required to target and de-escalate at-risk people. We need to expand the capacity for local authorities to work with the community uh, in identifying individuals who are high risk and taking steps to mitigate that risk. Whether it's by mental health support or working with the family or other types of uh, social service support, working with faith community, there are things that can be done to prevent acts of violence from materializing and we just have to make sure every community has the ability to do that. Increasingly violent rhetoric on and offline in the U.S. may also be part of the problem. We need to ratchet down the temperature uh, as it relates to our political discourse. We have a growing part of our society who feels that violence is an acceptable way to express that anger or to express one's opposition to uh, another's political opinions uh, or even government programs. The Texas attack happened just 10 days after 10 people were shot and killed in Buffalo. And statistics show that they may not be the last. Active shooter incidences in the U.S. have increased by more than half from 2020 to 2021 and doubled since 2018. We understand this threat and we have come to learn how to prevent this threat. What doesn't exist yet is a collective agreement across the United States, rural and urban America, Republicans and Democrats, that we need to come together and take steps to prevent these types of attacks. When we do that, when we approach this systematic problem with a systematic solution, we can start the process of reducing these types of attacks. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.